Hello, hello everybody. This is Mommy with Flowers by the Bunch. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Happy New Year. We are so excited to be back. So today I need to do a sympathy arrangement on a heart form. So this is a 24 inch Oasis heart form. Form. Um, it's made by the Oasis Company and what it is is this is a paper mache form that they have glued a heart shape Oasis onto the form. Now we took this Oasis and we have soaked it in water so it's really really heavy um, and so what we've had to do in order for our stand to hold this heart form is we had to double the stand. We had to put two stands together so that it would hold the weight of the um, of the form. It's just really heavy, especially once you soak it in complete in water. We're going to start out by adding white mums all over the face of this heart. So I have. I called the wholesaler and I ordered white mums and these are um, it's just a large white mom so I'm gonna take these mums and I am going to cut their stems to about an inch or an inch and a half and then I'm going to press them right down into that floral foam and it takes a little bit of time but I'm gonna individually press them all over the face of this foam so you take each individual stem, cut it short, and you're gonna need to cut it a little shorter than I did, about an inch I would say, and press it right into the foam. So I just pulled one of the little nets off. I'm cutting that stem at an angle and press them side by side because you want them to cover the foam completely. get them completely get the foam completely covered I'm gonna add some pretty greenery but this just takes a little bit of time because you have to press them in individually I'm not exactly sure how many bundles of moms that I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's one bundle. A bundle carry has ten moms. So I have twelve so far. Now you can do this with carnations. You can do it with cushion moms. You can do it with anything you want to. I find the largest flower is the best flower because it's going to cover up your um, foam easier and quicker with less blooms. So I'm just taking, cutting that stem, holding my finger in the center of the mom, and just pressing it right into that floral foam. You have to be a little careful with moms. They will break. So you don't want to, you just want to be a little tender with them. Don't be too rough. Now to me, when doing this, mums are your best choice because they're the least expensive for as many stems as you need. Carnations run, uh, I guess carnations are probably, carnations and moms are probably neck and neck for the price. I think they're both, depending on the, amount of stems that you get. They're both about $2 a stem, roughly cost, I mean retail. And so, maybe they're about the same. I feel like you get more bang for your buck with the mom though. It's a little larger than a carnation. So it feels in your space better to me. All right, now I'm gonna come in and fill in the center. So, when you go to fill in the center, I'm not going to do them quite, quite as close as I did um, my mom's around the perimeter. And I tell you why is I have a bundle of white cushion moms that I can come in and fill in my space. So you see a little hole here and there. I'm going to come in with some white cushion moms. I'm just afraid we're not going to have enough 
to go quite as close. So we'll fill in with more mums. But you just keep working. And you can hear the water dripping. So because this foam is so filled with water, I have got a bucket underneath that is catching the water as it drips. Because as I add the flowers to the foam, it causes the water to um, drip. So I just put a bucket on the floor underneath my stand so that it will catch that water. Okay, so these mums are a little different. So what I may have to do is I'm going to have to spread some of these out because I ran out of this exact variety. So I'm just gonna spread them out and tuck these here and there. Just so that they all match. And they're all white, so it works out fine. The nice part about these, these spiders are there, it's just a different variety of mom. It's just a larger mom. And so, they fill in space really well. Okay, so there's all my large moms. And you can see, you can still see that there's some dark spots throughout. So this is where we're gonna come in with our smaller moms. So these are called cushion moms. Um, and so you see it's really pretty much the same variety. This is just more on a little spray. So there's several blooms per um, stem. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm gonna individually cut off each little bloom, just like I did with the larger blooms. And I am just going to tuck those right into the dark spots to cover up any of those dark spots where you can see the oasis. So I'm just cutting my blooms off and tucking those in. But you see how the varieties really don't matter as long as they're just in the same type of family. So they're all moms. And so it works out fine that they're different. They're all in the same color scheme. Okay. So after we get all of our mums in place, then we're gonna come across the center of our arrangement with some pretty lilies and roses. Ouch. Okay, so I've just about got all my dark spots covered with my mums. So my next thing is we will come in with some roses and lilies and I thought we would add a little bit of lavender stock. Okay, so we've got our heart completed. It's really very pretty, honestly. I think it's such a lovely piece. So next what we're going to do is I'm going to come across the heart with some lilies. So in the very center of the heart, I'm gonna use stargazer lilies. Stargazer lilies are in the oriental, oriental lily family, so they smell pretty. But a stargazer lily, I'll come closer, a stargazer lily is that red and pink lily, and it smells really pretty. So I'm gonna take, these were um, the sweet lady's favorite. And so we're going to use these here in the very center of this heart. So I just took it and I pressed it right into that floral foam. And I'm gonna take my floral knife and I'm gonna cut this one short. I'm gonna tuck it right there into that foam. Now you want to be sure to remove any of the pollen that might be left in the lily, just so that it doesn't get on anyone's clothes. You know, that's not good. So I just print, I'm just arranging directly into this floral foam. So the oasis is just exactly like any oasis that you arrange in. Um, 
it's just in the shape of a heart. <laughs> so it works out just right. Okay, so there are our lilies. Next I'm gonna come in with some lavender stock. So we're doing lavenders, pinks, and whites in this arrangement. So this stock is just a pretty lavender stock. Okay, so I'm gonna do um, a couple stems there and two or three stems down here. So I'm just taking my flower and cutting it at an angle. So you can see how I'm coming across the center of this arrangement um, with my flowers. Okay, so there is the stock that we added to our arrangement. So you see how it's kind of pretty, it's almost a banner coming across the heart. Next, we're gonna come in with our pretty lavender roses. So I'm pulling off any of the petals that don't look pretty, and I'm going to grab a few stems of forest wire. And I'm going to cut my wire short. And I'm just, um, I'm just taking my my wire snips and I am just cutting that wire into smaller pieces so that I can wire my roses. Now I personally like to wire roses especially if I'm going to use it in floral foam because it guarantees that that head is going to stand up so it just helps to keep this little neck from getting limp sometimes they'll just dip their little heads. I'm going to take this florist wire and I'm putting it in that little swollen part underneath that rose. It's called a calyx. And I'm twisting that wire just right around that stem, just like that. Now what that's going to do is just guarantee that this little head's going to stand up. So even if it doesn't get adequate water, it's going to stay looking fresh. So I'm going to take my little lavender roses and press them right into that foam. If I can get it to hit that foam, there we go. So I'm gonna press those right in to the foam. So I'm gonna just take that wire and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wire each of these roses before I place them into the foam. Next, what I'm doing is, you see me pulling off a few little petals. The reason I'm pulling those petals off is because they're what we call guard petals. A guard petal is a petal that is on the rose when it first buds. It's that first little tight bud. That guard petal is there to protect these pretty petals, okay? And so they don't always look as pretty as the rose itself looks. And so they sometimes, most often, have bumps and bruises because they've been the little petals that have um, protected the rose as it's grown. So if they look bumped or bruised, go ahead and remove those. You're not hurting the rose when you do such. So go ahead and remove those guard petals. Now when you go to insert these roses down into this foam, be sure to insert them um, really far in. You don't want them falling out during delivery, so be sure that you press them as far into that foam as you can so that they're not gonna come loose in delivery because you don't want your arrangement falling apart. It's very important it stays together. All right, after I get all my roses in place, then I'm gonna come back with some greenery. Now, I am going to go all the way around this heart with some podocarpus, porticarpus, corpus, porticorpus, <laughs> that's a hard word to say. It is called weeping porticorpus and it cuts, I can cut it into tiny pieces and it's going to ring the entire arrangement in greenery. Um, okay, so there's our roses and our lilies. Next, let's come in with some pretty greens. So I'm going to use for this arrangement, I have, um, this is called Green Dragon. These are called Aspidistra leaves. The long leaves are Aspidistra. And then this is Silver Dollar Eucalyptus. 
So I'm gonna come in and fill in my space with a little bit of pretty greenery. I'm not sure about these leaves, let's see. So this is a picture that our client picked out that he really liked. So the picture showed these pretty leaves. So I thought I would try to get as close to the picture as I could. But the wonderful part is, is if I don't like it, I can always pull that out, right? Okay, so there are our Aspidistra leaves. Next, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of this green dragon. So I like this green dragon because I like to use it as more of a filler flower instead of greenery necessarily. So it kind of gives us a little bit of an airy filler flower look. And it just fills in and softens the arrangement so it's not quite so harsh. So I'm just taking the smaller pieces using my knife and cutting that greenery at an angle and just tucking it right down into that floral foam. And I don't know if you can hear it, but the cat's sitting over here on my design table eating cat food. <laughs> so he's crunching on this cat food. Okay, so there is our little bit of green trick that just kind of fills in some space. Next, we're gonna come in with a little bit of this pretty eucalyptus. So I took a small piece and cut it off and I'm going to cut the individual little pieces just so that I have some smaller pieces to tuck in. And it's kind of like that dragon. It's just going to soften this arrangement. All right. So I have the flowers coming down the center of the arrangement. All my mom's all the way around. Now to finish this little heart, and it's not so little, is it? To finish our heart, I'm going to take some porticorpus. This is called weeping porticorpus. So when it grows, it grows like a shrub. Um, just really, really pretty. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna cut it into small pieces and I'm going to come all the way around this cross. And what it's going to do is it's going to cover up these edges all the way around this cross. Now, I still see when I move to this side, I'm seeing a few little dark spots. So I have a few months left. So I'm going to take and work those into those dark spots. But what this is going to do is basically finish this arrangement. It's going to just, number one, cover up any of that floral foam that's left showing. So I'm just tucking this greenery right in to cover up the foam. And it makes my piece a little larger and showier. And that's important. You want it to look large and showy and just, just pretty. Now what we did was we took this, this heart, it's very heavy. So we took this heart and we made sure that we attached it in three different places on this, this phone, I mean on this stand. It was very important that the stand, number one, holds the weight and number two, it does not come apart. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably heard me say the most important part of making any floral arrangement is your mechanics. You want your arrangement to stay together. And so when we put this heart, it actually took two of us. It took Callie and I to put it on because it's heavy. And so when Callie and I attached it, we made sure to attach it in three different places. So I'm just, this takes a little time. The only thing is, is that this arrangement's really not a hard arrangement to put together. It's just a little time consuming because you have to individually cut each little stem and tuck it in deep. So it just takes a little time, that's all. All right. So next I'm going to come around the other side, but you can see how I just kind of ringed that heart with that pretty greenery. 
Um, and it just makes it larger and showier. So I'm just taking that greenery and cutting it into small pieces and continuing to add it in. Now you could even take some of this greenery because it's on the outside of the arrangement and run it kind of down through the center of that arrangement also. And then it all matches, which I like. I like it when things match. Now when cutting this green greenery, I like to use a knife when I design flowers. You do not have to. I find that using a knife makes things quicker. Um, and it's just something that I've always done. If you don't want to use a knife, you can always use snips to cut all this greenery. Now sometimes greenery has really woody stems, so it's a little hard to cut with a floral knife. Um, and you can certainly use snips. Um, but if you as a designer um, ever want to get quicker um, at designing, a knife is the way to go. A floral knife is the way to go. It just makes it faster where you don't have to put down your scissors or your snips between cutting your flowers and inserting them into the arrangement. You can always keep that floral knife in your hand and you don't have to do a whole lot of set it down, pick it up, set it down, pick it up. So it saves time and I tell you if you ever start designing with a knife you'll never go back to floral snips unless the greenery is too hard to cut. And then you might use snips. Now I will say that I have been using a knife since I started in floral design. Um, it's kind of like they taught us to to write in cursive in, in school. Well they don't do that anymore, right? And so I don't know if they're still teaching with knives, but to me it's something that was the very that was one of the best things that I think I learned in floral design school is how to use a knife. Now the knife I like to use, the floral knife that I like to use, I order from our wholesaler. Um, I think that you can get them on Amazon um, and if you're interested I can link one on Amazon. You can even buy a paring knife, a good paring knife. Um, at a local kitchen store or Walmart or you know any of those kind of stores. A paring knife is going to work the same. You just want the blade of the knife to be fairly short. If the blade's too long, it's just hard to work with. All right, so I've just about got my entire heart ringed out with the greenery. I am gonna come down the center of this arrangement with um, some more porticorpus, um, just so that it matches, because I think that looks nice. And I am going to step back and look and make sure that all of my area, I know there's a little dark spot over there that I'm seeing the oasis, so I'm going to make sure that I add any of the moms in some, one of these dark spots. So I'm going to take this porticorpus and I'm just going to kind of add just a little bit down the center. And there we have it. There is our solid heart standing spray. So the reason I'm calling it a solid heart is you see it's an it's a solid heart. Now we do also carry, um, we don't have any in right now, but we do also carry the open hearts, which is really just a wreath in the shape of a heart. Beautiful, beautiful pieces. But this is what we call our solid heart um, standing spray. Guys, thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. If you if you have any questions about floral design or how I design flowers, please don't hesitate to ask those in the comments below. We are so happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, if you'll do us a favor and you will subscribe to our channel, we would love that. And if you hit that little bell, you will be sure to get any notifications about when we add a new video to our site. Guys, have a wonderful day and we'll see you real soon. Thank you.